questions about Arataki Ito. Oh, him again. Sure, I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first, do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. Uh, how much more are we talking about here? A one-off payment of 397,000 Mora, up front. Plus a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa! That's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with the price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So, from the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a Crimson Oni and a Blue Oni. They were the best of friends. The Crimson Oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The Blue Oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an Oni. The Crimson Oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. So the blue Oni said to the crimson Oni, Akka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the crimson Oni chased the blue Oni away. The crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. I suppose the blue Oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson Oni remain now. But, but the blue Oni was just an innocent little kid! Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the Crimson Oni. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. Every generation of Oni inherits these traits. So while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? But how could he do that? After the Blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the Blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomia troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait! Paimon still has a question. If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Okay, but what's up with people throwing beans at Oni? What use is that? 
Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. Right! Knowing our target's weakness will make things a whole lot easier! It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course, I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky!